Hi, I am Cesar Santos. Today we're going to talk about composition by looking at some classical paintings. I'm here at the Frost Art Museum, which is located in Miami, Florida. It's part of Florida International University campus, and I'm really excited because normally they have contemporary art exhibiting here. Miami is known for Art Basel, the Art District, Wynwood, and even the museums carry a lot of contemporary art. But they have put together a show with paintings from the Ringling Museum. The show is about archetypal women that shaped some biblical stories. And you know my love for the female figure, for the female portraits. I'm gonna go in there and analyze them in person, walk through the gallery and see how we can detect uh, the technique and the elements used by the masters to control the viewers emotions. These paintings can be interpreted in many different ways but today I'm just gonna focus on composition. So let's go in there. Let's think of composition as the plan, the placement, the arrangement of elements of art in a work. Composition is different from the subject. It's not to be confused. That's how you can have many artists representing the same subject or story in infinite amount of ways. Visual arts is the oldest of all art forms. And therefore, we have realized universal principles that if used and combine it with your personal attitude as an artist, you can have as many combinations as there are people. Another way to understand composition is to realize that we humans need balance. Not only we need balance to walk straight, but also we need balance throughout our lives. And we are part of nature and nature is all about balance. In painting, we balance the light with the dark. We balance color temperatures, the cool, the warm, straight lines with curves. We balance the up with the down, the right with the left, and we balance different paint application the smooth, transparent areas with more blocky impastos. One way to make this balance possible is to unify things, to group things together. Also, as humans, we have the tendency of grouping. We put kitchen things, or we call those are bathroom things, big things, small things. We even group Cubans and Italians. <laughs> While thinking of this, let's walk through some paintings and analyze how they were composed. Let's begin here by simply dividing the painting into equal parts. So we're gonna do a central vertical line and a horizontal line. And we're gonna find that the biggest amount of contrast, the main subject, is gonna be encountered in the middle around that tension point right in the middle, right? For instance, as in contrasting here, sometimes we have two um, points calling our attention. If we divide this in half, we can see that the, the, the subject is represented by the communication between these two images. Um, and, and one of the ways to, to keep the eye moving and to have movement in the painting is to create those tension points communicating with each other. She is standing a little bit to the left of this middle line and she's looking at this area, which is like kind of empty, so it's strange, right? But then immediately on the other side, on the right side, we have the other two secondary characters. And also realize how she has been um, planned in a way that she's lighter, she's brighter than the other two subjects also to get our attention in a faster, quicker way. Let's focus for now in the idea of light and dark, okay? The majority of the painting is in dark by percentage. So that means that the light area is of importance since it has a less of a dominance throughout the painting. Well, so the painting is dominated by this dark area and we can find the lightest area being the storyteller. Think of the background as the bass in a band, keeping the rhythm going, not calling too much the attention, and the lights come out like uh, if it would be a violin solo towards the front. The area of lightness is also grouped together. They're not scattered. There is a, a dark um, that is going, moving along. And if you see the light areas within the dark space is subdued, is subordinate to this dark mass. While in the middle, we have these uh, lighter um, details. We have less contrast, so we can unify those light spaces. We see the surrounding area grouped together by darkness. If you follow the dark, it's all connected. 
and the light mass in the middle is also unified, is uh, integrated with all its variations, the lights and the darks, um, subordinate to this bigger, brighter mass. In a two-dimensional way, I'm gonna look for elements, just linear elements that direct our vision, our eye, to this main subject. So we have this diagonal line, which diagonals are always giving movement. They're a little bit in balance, and they, they wanna create this sense of movement, of something going on that is uh, not so balanced. So there is a line pointing almost uh, in a, in a, with a strong red through her neck. And also, we see the two characters looking and directing their faces towards this main subject as well. As well as the hand placed in a way that directs our eye towards her. So there are different flat elements that are pointing and directing to the main character. Normally, flowing elements are always moving and it gives uh, animation and movement to the piece. And we can find those moving elements around the drapery to keep our eyes looking around for information. Straight lines have the tendency to represent strength and architectural forms. And even though we don't have architectural forms here, we have some straight lines that want to tell us something. One line that I see that is uh, pretty straight and horizontal, actually the only horizontal line that I see here is the one underlining that head um, resting there. And so it's like an underlying statement for what's going on in the painting. Now let's look at how the painting was composed in terms of depth. Now we have looked at the linear aspect. Let's look at how he arranged objects in space. If you want an object to have the sense of going back, you have to mix it and have more of the background color mixed into it. And we can see how the two individuals here are darker. They have more of that color um, dominating the background, giving them a, a little bit of a secondary space going back in space. While she being lighter, remember things that are lighter and brighter and contrasty come towards us. And the reason is that our eye will detect it faster, therefore feeling a little bit closer to us than maybe softer things will feel that they're in the back. Even look at this drapery, how the drapery in the front has the strongest, highest chroma, mostly saturated, while the secondary drapery there is just in the dark, mixed with those background colors to push it back. The masters also discovered that earth colors give unity, integrity throughout the whole painting. And in terms of colors, it's a good idea to not have a painting only using warm colors or very cold colors. There is a balance. So we have the earth colors dominating throughout these browns. We also have two extremes, the blacks and the white to show the extreme range of value. And in between them, there is a balance between cools and, and warms. For instance, we have this red here um, calling the attention on top, very bright. And then to balance that, we have a little bit of the green and the blues and these cool grays to to offset that amount of red on top. If we divide this big painting in half, so let's think of, of the middle here, um, vertical and horizontal alignment, and we see that the main composition has been created by creating two tension points. We have the king up there communicating with the crowd in the bottom. This design starts to create that dialogue between the two main characters. Also. Notice the symmetry of grouping, almost like a scale. We see the group here having this space at the bottom, separating them from the edge of the painting. And also on top of the king, we almost have the same amount of space at the top of that, of that, uh, of that mass of that group. So we have these two main groups a little bit asymmetrical, but there are things in both areas that are equal. Let's see how the grouping of the light and dark is working in this painting. So we have a, a mass of people here unified by their value, surrounded by light masses, lighter masses, so that way we can group them together, as well as the area where the king is. So this whole area here is lacking that light, made, made dark on purpose, so we can detect the contrast of the king of the face in light, surrounded by that darkness. Here, we can see that they are meant to be less important because their faces are on top of that light area, dividing the dark masses with their body and their heads being part of the background. 
is part of the story. By having less contrast throughout each uh, individual face, it gives that idea that the king is one versus the mass gets together, grouping together by this idea of less contrast, individual contrast. The idea of dividing the painting in halves with the cross in the middle is almost uh, literal in this painting. We can see the column here dividing the painting in half and we see this middle uh, value attaching to the darkness, almost dividing, if you squint, the painting in half vertically, as well as the horizontal line finding uh, hints with the horizon there behind them. In this painting, we can see two systems working side by side. The figure organic feeling of flowing elements, flowing lines, keeping our eyes busy throughout the crowd, contrasted by the straight um, dignity of the architecture surrounding them. So this creates a contrast for our eyes to rest and to look for variety. The figures are all inclined to create that unbalance, that sense of, of problem. This red figure here, also contrasted by the vertical lines of architecture, inclined. The king also is moving towards the crowd and the crowd is also inclined toward them. So you can see all these elements kind of uh, stacked against each other to give that sense of instability. Now let's see how depth is being presented here by the artist. Smaller things tend to go back further, bigger things come forward, and this is something that was used here to put the bigger people in the front um, to create that, uh, the sense that they're closer to us, while in the back we have the same amount of people wearing the same clothes, but they are further back. That gives a sense of distance, as well as the, as the perspective of the architecture. If we follow the lines of the floor, they kind of tend to, to lead us towards the back. If we see that area in the back, how it has been leading up on purpose to, to lessen the contrast, so that the more contrasty things are closer to us, creating that sense of depth as well. Colors in the front are a little bit more saturated, the colors in the back have that muted sense, which gives that sense of distance. The highest chroma notes are actually brought by these reds here, which is the closest thing we have. So even the reds, if we look at them, they go in terms of saturation. As they move back, they become uh, more, they have more of the color of the background, of that cool gray into them. So we can see the hat being the highest chroma here and moving around with the reds all the way to the back, we almost see these reds very muted. As in nature, the majority of the painting is being produced with these earth tones, with these uh, earth colors, and, uh, and we're gonna see hints of, of, of higher chroma, almost like fruits in the tree. They are um, rare to find, they are the anomaly, but they are the ones uh, narrating the story. The painting is, uh, is not completely dominating cools versus warms. There is a, a balance to this. And we can find, even in the groups, how they have been organically divided into some people wearing more warm colors and some others cools. Even though the grays are a great color to balance things because they're not um, as, um, as intrusive with our eyes. They stay quiet, they give that sense of dignity. Here is another case. Let's get the whole painting and divide it into four equal parts, a vertical in the middle, a horizontal across the middle. And we can see that we will find the main subject also in that tension point. And we'll find it also because it's the area of more contrast. She's the lightest being in the painting and she's surrounded by all these intricate colors, calling our attention quicker and finding her. The eye tends to lift from the area of contrast. Our eyes don't move horizontally throughout or vertical. We go zigzagging around. So it's good as a painter to look for these tension points in a zigzag type of, of attitude. Her light guide us through lighting up. Imagine this is the same drapery and look how light this side is because all the lights are connected, massed together, guiding us through the arm, the hand, and then that line 
pointing and then we find the secondary characters that she's dealing with, that the painting is dealing with. Our eyes stayed entertained throughout the painting. The artist here, it's uh, also unifying the lights, connecting the main lights together and uh, even though they're existing in this uh, mass of darkness around, but he has created some scattered lights throughout the bottom here to create that, that mystery, that tension, that movement throughout the painting as well. These principles are there for the artist to use them in different ways, in infinite amount of ways. Looking at the composition in a two-dimensional way, we can see that she's the top of this triangle, of this mass, and we will find the base of the triangle having the other secondary characters as well. And the only straight line in this painting is that sharp sword, a sharp knife there. And, and we can see how that is directing us from her towards that head being cut off there. Straight lines give strength, and that's how we are showing this woman using her strength with that straight sharp line underlining this mass of triangular form. Another element here to create the sense of electric vibe is the zigzag. Zigzagging keep us um, in danger, keep us aware, awake. We don't see this composition as, uh, as being uh, calm because of the use of those zigzags attitude throughout. So throughout the drapery, even the background, the way they use the colors is, um, is giving us that hint of movement throughout the painting. Um, while looking at colors here too, the, the background has this cool feeling that also shows with areas of draperies and to balance that we have a high chroma red on one area in the bottom of this triangle and, the, and another sense of, of chroma in the other side creating that strong foundation. The highest chroma reds creating that triangular form. Her lips in the middle of the top, red and red and maybe a little bit of the red in the center of this triangle too. So we can see how that has been balanced to create that harmony between the cools and those bright comma reds. Here we are in front of another painting and let's start by doing the same thing. Dividing the cross in between and this is another example of the, of the main subjects having that communication. There is nothing really, really in the middle that is calling our attention. She's the most uh, contrasty element here and she's looking and having that connection with the other two secondary masses. So this creates a one main element full of light with two darker subjects fighting for attention. In analyzing this painting with uh, the light and mass and just focusing on values, we're going to see that the majority of the painting is dark and we have the light areas calling the attention and look how they go in spiraling around her. So there are elements that are lit up to guide our eyes. And we see his arm with the red kind of starting with the curve. Then he goes in the same gesture and then even this drapery moves around. So this gives that sense of, of movement in a, in a softer way throughout the painting, guiding us with that spiral sense of movement with the light describing the story. The main subject has the two extreme values. The lightest thing she's wearing, also the darkest uh, drapery she has. So that also creates that sense that she's coming forward towards us and we get her, we get to communicate with her first. Their contrast in, the, in their faces also uh, tells about the story. She's fully capturing light. Her whole face is in light while, while they are a little bit more in darkness than receiving that light. This piece, similarly to the other one, we have the zigzagging idea, all these diagonals creating that instability, that sense of movement throughout the painting. And the only straight line that I see, not only architecturally here, kind of to create that contrast between the organic figures and architecture, but also we have this strong diagonal connecting the two subjects actually almost in the middle of them to directing us towards her in a quicker, faster way. The artist created a sense of depth by values, adding the dark elements further towards the back there. Look at the sky. 
how he has compressed it, how he has um, um, made it subordinate to this dark mass in the background and how the lighter forms come closer to us. Like I said before, having the lightest colors being the closest. If we look at her, his hand, for instance, and, and the other hands in the front, we can see that by distance they have been represented in terms of values. Look at his hand here resting, how it's catching the most light, the second one is getting the second light, and the third. So in that same order, they appear, giving that distance sense in the painting. And of course, she has the lightest one, so she's coming forward. But even this sense of lighting is so arbitrary that even with her form catching so much light, the hints of light hitting her hand there is still subordinate to that dark area to not compete with these stronger elements in the front. Just quickly, I want to mention that in this painting, if we divide the, the painting by half as we have done, we can see that the main element of contrast is towards the middle. So we have this sharp, dark line with the, with, the, with the flesh color there creating that contrast. So in order, and remember that the eye has a tendency to move, to look for contrast first, then rise up. And we see that happening here. Since she's a dancer, it's interesting how he placed from, in the lower part of the painting, this diagonal um, line, giving that sense of instability of movement to create that sense that she is a dancer. Okay, let's wrap this video up. If you think that this came out by chance, then I think that you need to advance.